picture of? Katie, what, how, how do you know it's a flower? There's no stem or leaves or ground or sky or anything to show you details of a flower. What tells you that this is a flower, Andre or Adam? The color. The color? Okay. Ashley? Um, the shade and like how they do it on some of the dark and outline of it. Okay, you chose different values. Okay, but anything can have values and anything can have color. How do you know this is a flower? Matt? Shape. The shape looks like what? Uh, petals. Petals? Yeah. Rebecca, what do you think? The shape looks like what? A rose. Okay, reminds you of a rose. Good. We're talking about an American painter who was probably the most famous woman painter in the world. Drum roll. Georgia O'Keeffe. Okay? Georgia O'Keeffe lived in, she died in 1987. How many of you were born in 1987 or 88? Okay, so she died about the same time you were born. And she lived to be 98 years old. She was a beautiful, beautiful painter. And she lived part of her life in New York City. And another part of her life, she traveled all the way to New Mexico. Um, and she lived in two completely different parts of the world. Or not in the world, but different parts of the United States. A crazy big city like New York. And then when she went to New Mexico, she lived out in the desert. And she loved them both. She finished, she lived the last half of her life in New Mexico, though. Let me show you a picture of her. This is Georgia. There's Georgia. O'Keefe. I always pretend like I'm sneezing. Like, oh, That's how I teach the kindergartners to remember her name. And Georgia loved to paint about the things that were around her. When she was in New York, she painted about the big city. And we have this painting right here called The Shelton with Sunspots. So she painted the big buildings. But she had a special way of painting that changed objects so they didn't look exactly real. What do we call that when something isn't exactly real looking? Yes. Uh, Adam. Yeah, okay, but when we're looking at artwork, there's a special word. Like Pablo Picasso, when he would show a person's face and he would show it from all different viewpoints at the same time. What do we call that? Abstract, right. And Georgia would pretend when she painted her flowers, she would pretend she was painting it from maybe a bumblebee's point of view because that bumblebee would go inside the flower and everything to the bee would look giant. And that's what she would do to her flower painting. She would take a small flower and she would enlarge it so that it was huge. This painting, for example, is probably as big as that screen up there. Okay? Kind of like thinking that she wanted people to notice the small things around you, especially the small things in nature. And it's kind of like thinking about the movie uh, Honey, I Sent the Kids, how even a tiny blade of grass would look like a giant, giant tree if you were the size of what? Maybe an ant. Mm -hmm. What else was in the movie that could help us understand how she changed sizes? What? What? The Lego? I, I don't, I've seen the movie once, but I don't really remember. What happened? Oh, he was the, it's the normal size. And then they were shrunk. I remember a part two where they got rained on or the sprinklers turned on when they were in the grass. And it was like a big bucket of water getting poured in with each drop. Okay. Think about that. How many of you really take time to look inside the center of a flower to notice all the little tiny details and all the shapes? and the little lines. Georgia wanted you to stop and notice those small things. Let's take a look at a couple more of her paintings. And she was really one of the first people to, to do this. Of course, Pablo Picasso was, a, was a, painted in an abstract way, but Georgia had a different way of looking at things too. People weren't used to seeing flowers painted as big as the slide to the screen up there. Okay. 
She was enlarging. She was abstract. She also liked to paint skulls. Every morning when she was living in the desert, she would go out for a desert walk, and she'd walk around and pick up things on her walk, maybe rocks or sometimes skulls and bones that were left um, just lying around. And she would pick them up, and she would take them back to her studio, and she would paint them. And she especially loved to hold the bones up into the sky. If any of you have ever been to New Mexico, the sky is bright blue every single day. It's beautiful. And so she would look at the holes in the bones, and she would make the bones look like they were floating in the blue sky. Or kind of like this picture here. I'll show you. There's a really good one in this book. People thought she was kind of dreary and gloomy for painting bones from dead animals. But she didn't think that at all. She thought that the shapes were the beautiful thing. And she didn't think that. She wasn't really thinking about it being a bone. She just liked the shapes. And she liked the way it looked uh, in the sky. Here's another one. This is a red, red, white, and blue skull. And here's more of what the architecture looked like in New Mexico. So look at that one, and then you look at the one of the skyscraper. You can kind of see the difference. Sort of the same colors, though. So she was painting what was around her. This is the famous one. This one they made a postage stamp from. Well, what you're going to do today is you're going to pretend you are a bee or an ant, and you're going to take a flower and enlarge it so big that it becomes abstract on your paper. Okay? I'll show you some examples. You're going to take a flower. One last picture of hers. This is called white trumpet flower. You're going to paint it so big, or you're going to draw it so big that the petals might go off the paper. You're not going to worry about painting a stem. You're not going to worry about painting leaves. Okay, what's important are the details in the middle, the small, tiny details. You're going to pretend your eyes are like a magnifying glass. 